At this point you may be thinking, hey, shouldn't there be a fan made trailer? Well, with stuff like this, it's a bit hard to do. And since you know, we got only one map and the progression system, today's video, or in this segment, I'm going to be explaining what Battlefront 2's of this month's content was. So the progression system. Many of you know this to be the revamp of what it was beforehand. They removed the loot crates and also the buying of the loot crates and they changed it all up. The microtransactions now you can only use like those um, crystals to actually buy skins, victory poses and emotes which is a nice addition it is. Now, other prices are higher than others, but with this new progression system, all heroes got unlocked, but the ones coming up at the, the end of the solo season was not. And then also, the star cards were we found in a different way, that how you get them is that every time you level up, a star card will unlock for you to buy, and you'll be able to buy them with skill points. So, now, how do you get these skill points? Well, it's simple, by literally playing the game. Now, you can go up to a ranking of 70, but other heroes, vehicles will have different ranges. Some of them may go up to just 30. So that's what the progression system was. It did change everything and made game points, credits, ranking up to different levels much easier in a way that we could ever do this before and this is also leading to the question that is the game still paid to win well battle front bazaar put it in a way that was quite good and i will show you a little bit of the video but let's say no the game is not paid to win all right potential battlefront 2 fans and gamers who are still under the impression this game is pay to win Today I'm hoping to crush those beliefs and help explain to anyone who may be on the fence about coming back to the game just why they should, and exactly why Battlefront 2 is no longer pay to win. First off, just to define it so we know what we're talking about, pay to win is a term used to describe a game or game mechanic that encourages the spending of real world currency to unlock boosts or upgrades that let you gain an advantage over other players in the game. Usually, these types of games are free to play on a mobile platform, and it's very rare to see something like this in a major AAA title. Battlefront 2's old loot crate system wasn't 100% pay to win, it was more like a pay to avoid the grind, but it still was enough to where it would provide an unfair advantage to whales with lots of cash who could afford to buy loot crate after loot crate until they got the upgrades they were looking for. Since the crate system in Battlefront 2 was entirely based on chance, you had virtually no control over what upgrades you got for which trooper, hero, or vehicle, and you had to rely on luck if you wanted to level a specific class or vehicle up. In theory, you could have a maxed out trooper or vehicle that you had never played as, and right off the bat that seemed pretty backwards to almost every Battlefront fan. This was how the game operated for the first four months of its release. In March of 2018, however, we got the biggest overhaul this game will probably ever see in the form of the progression system update. As our global communications manager, Ben Walk, has described it, they ripped out the spine of the game and replaced it during a live setting. This, unfortunately, set the game back by many months in terms of content, since the progression overhaul used up so many resources and time, but at least the game is now no longer running on the slot machine mechanic to level up the playable features. It now runs basically how everyone envisioned it would before launch, with progression of each hero, class, and vehicle being based on time spent playing as them, and on how well you play. Star cards and abilities, which were previously hidden behind the casino-style lottery system, are now unlocked by leveling your troop or vehicle, with higher levels unlocking the arguably more useful star cards. The overhaul got rid of crates almost entirely as well, with the only remaining crates being the daily crates that contain a consistent 500 credits as well as special crates given out to the players by DICE themselves. And also within this month, we got the direct port of Bedspin from Battlefront 2015. Many people again was quite ashamed about this, but considering this progression system took a very, very, very long time, and then after this, the, some of the devs uh, went working on Battlefield, uh, five, uh, I, I, oh, I, I don't blame them, but Bestman was a nice addition to the game. Bestman since then got added to Heroes vs Villains, 
arcades, uh, <laughs> jetpack, cargo, strike, and then also blast. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it's a bit too late already. So those are the modes that it got added to, and it's honestly a very nice addition. A shame that we didn't get the other two ones, but yeah, many people did complain that this stop giving us direct ports. Well, look, I like this one. I, I honestly do. And for the people who did buy the season pass for the first box one, I think this is a free treat for them. Also, yeah, and then also uh, the. Ewok Hunt's map is also a direct port from Marathon 2015, but no one cares! Moving on, and may the force be with you.